This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. So, um, how are you doing? Good Welcome. Day. Thank you for coming. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to share with you another, this is our third um, and last session for this, um, this um, unique Kabbalistic meditation, meditation in the spirit of Judaism. Um, and like I presented, explained it to you in the first session, that there are different ways of Jewish meditation. Um, meditation that um, I saw, I learned, I um, heard of in, in, in through ancient books, from all the like in traditional uh, teachings, and um, and also from um, from methods that uh, I practice myself. Now, um, because that we're also going to meditate today, we're also going to do something um, nice and unique in, in that way as well today. But I wanted to. To, to teach you also another piece of knowledge for you to understand about another way of Jewish meditation. Now, the problem with that issue is that you are English speakers and Jewish meditation usually is based on the ancient Hebrew, on the Lashon HaKodesh, on the Holy Language. So, um, it will be hard to practice even though that we try to make it as easy as can be by translating it and also writing it the way the right way to pronounce it and um, but still it it's hard to practice it hard it's hard to to try and to meditate like that you can learn it you can understand it but really to flow with it in the way that you should flow in meditation really to, to go into the depths of, of that way of meditation, it will be hard as English speakers when the, whole, the language and the letters are not really carved deep, deep in the, into the mind. But I think that it's still very important to understand how it works and we will try to do something with that as well and then we'll try to meditate as well in a simple way. So first of all, like I told you, um, we need to understand that the Creator, while creating the world, He created the world with His power of speech. He said, and things took place, became. He said, Yehi all, there is going to be light, and light appeared. He said, there is going to be earth, there is going to be sky, and He said it in the ancient language, in the holy language. And things took place. Now, it's kind of complex for us to understand how by just saying, yeah, he all oh, gonna be light, they're gonna be light with all the wisdom that light contains. Why? Because light is so many things. Light got so many ways that it's being expressed in the world. When we're saying light, I feel illuminated, I feel I'm shining, if the day is bright, those, those bow lights are, 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 are producing light. There are lightnings, and there are so many aspects of light. It can be spiritual light, it can be physical light, it can be a light that is creation of human beings, it can be a natural light from a natural source, it can be unexpected light, unexplainable light, it like many, many kinds of light. And also light, is, is the power of understanding, that it's the wisdom that is shining inside of your mind and suddenly things are being clarified to you and you feel illuminated. Many, many ways to interpret and to explain light. So just by saying, Rahi oh, Yehi oh, and that's it, it was enough to create. So there is in the way that we speak, the way that the Creator is speaking as well because we receive the power of speak, speech from him that in our mind we hold a certain intention now for 
when we're saying something, you can say to a person a, a, a simple, per, a simple, simple uh, word, simple sentence like, you should take a right, you should go to that direction, whatever, and you can have the intention of helping him, and you can have the intention of like kicking him away from you, and it's a very negative intention. And while using the same exact wor words, you will send him to a different place in your mind. So the intention of a person or the Creator himself while saying those words brings the energy and channeling the light of the intention into the creation of that thing that we're saying. Now when we're saying something, when we're putting the intention in it, by that we're creating the reality. So there are words but beyond the power of the word itself, there is the power of the intention. This is why when we're praying, this is why when we're meditating, it's a very good and important and deep thing to repeat and to say the same words over and over as many times as we want. And it's a good thing because by saying the same word over and over and over, you can aim and put more from the intention of your heart into that word. Before of running to the next one and completing that sentence and completing that blessing, you can focus and set your mind into creating something and, and by that making a bigger, stronger effect, welcome, to that word while using that, that word. So, when we're saying a simple prayer like Bore Olam, ten amin becha, the creator of the world, let me believe in you. Simple words like the, the, the first word that a person can say to Hashem. Please, Father in heaven, the creator of the world, let me believe in you. I want to have faith. Let me believe in you. Simple word. When you say the creator of the world, those this, the Creator, this word for you can contain so many things. One time you can say the Creator of the world and in your mind to aim that He's the one that created heaven and earth. One time you can say, hey, you created me, I'm your child. In a third way, you can think about His greatness and His power to control nature and to change nature and to make wonders in the world that He is so... whatever you want, whatever you feel. And while repeating those words, Ribbono Shel Olam, Bore Olam, Bore Olam, Bore Olam, Bore Olam, you can say this word for hours. And there is nothing wrong with that as long as you feel that you're renewing something with your intention. When you are sending your prayer to a more precise place, in a more delicate way, that you feel like that you are also adding something new and you're renewing with the intention of your heart while praying, you are making that prayer to be more effective and more powerful. And this is a very important thing to use while praying. Now, there are many ways how to put intention into words. One of them is just to feel, it's just to think. Without being a genius, without preparing your heart and, and knowing too much, and learning about those concepts and now bringing all the knowledge that you bought in your life into your memory and to your awareness and now bringing it back. Sometimes we just want to want to pray. Sometimes we just want to connect somehow. So just to say it and just to feel this is one aspect that is very important. Just even to mention the same thing over and over without deep thinking, without deep intentions, without deep meanings and, and understanding. Just to call Him. Like we know that all the Torah and all the verses are names of the Creator. You can just invite Him and call Him by saying, Borolam, Borolam, and you call Him Borolam, Borolam, and over and over again and again there was one righteous man, he was a, a famous rabbi, 
that he met another famous rabbi, another very known righteous man, and that one was very proud that he had a student that knew 1,000 pages of Talmud, of Gemara, by heart. With all the explanations, he was a genius, his students, one of his students knew 1,000 pages by heart in his mind, everything, with all the explanations. And he was proud that he has some wonderful student like that. And he told his friend that was also a very great rabbi and famous, and he told him, my, one of my students, he knows how to say 1,000 pages Gemara by heart with all the, the, the explanations on the page. So the other rabbi, the other righteous man answered to him. He told him, and I have a student that can look to the sky and say 1,000 times, Ribbono Shel Olam, Ribbono Shel Olam, Ribbono Shel Olam, Ribbono Shel Olam. 1,000 times he can call Hashem without stopping. <laughs> Is your genius able to do that? Can he call Hashem in that simplicity 1,000 times just to call him, please, 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 like we're saying with Moses, right, Hanan. He went and prayed 515 complete prayers on one topic. He wanted to achieve, he had a goal, he wanted to enter to the Holy Land, he wanted to make Aliyah, he born in Egypt, he went to the desert, he wanted to complete his Aliyah and to, and to be buried in the Holy Land. So he went and prayed. 515 prayers on one topic. Let me in to the Holy Land. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. Sometimes you think about the let. Sometimes you think about the me. Sometimes you think about the in. Sometimes you think about all of it together for me, for you, for other people to learn about me, to learn from me, that it will be for your name. You can have many intentions while saying. So one of the aspects, like we said, is that simplicity. And I think that it's the highest aspect of them all. I think that it's the strongest connection because it will be the easiest way for you to connect to the prayer from an honest place. The other ways that we have, and I'm going to teach you those, it's much harder for people like us, not for those ones that establish those ways, because they were very deep, they were geniuses, they were very wise. For them, that was the simple intention. For them, all that information that we will discuss soon, for them it was their knowledge. You're going to go and speak with the genius when he, when he will explain to you the meaning of Adam, what is an Adam. For him, so much information is running in his mind and you, for you, oh, really? Oh, wow. And he haven't started even opening for you the, the, the treasures, the archives of information and knowledge that he has on that topic. But for you, every word is so heavy and so powerful and he haven't started to like he's counting pennies for you on the table. It's nothing compared to the treasures that he holds in his mind. So for those righteous ones, those things that for us today will be so hard to understand even, for them it was simple. So we're going to try to understand how it works a little bit, just to expand our knowledge a little bit. And then we're going to forget all about it and go back to the fields and do simple hit the dut. But in, in, in for, for the respect of, of the Jewish meditation, we will learn that, that topic as well. So, like you see in those pages that I gave out, they gave you, it's, we wrote this simple request, it's a simple request. Instead of that request, every person can think about any other request that he wants. I want to build a house, I want to complete my Aliyah, I want to come back in Shuvah, I want to be healthy, I want to be rich, I want to go to Disneyland, whatever you want. You can pray, it's okay, it's allowed to pray. So, like we said, Bore Olam ten li le'amin becha. So the, the translation of this, um, of this prayer is the creator of the world, let me believe in you. Simple intention, simple request. We're asking, like that before we pray, we say to Hashem, Hashem Sfatai Tiftah, please Father in Heaven, open my lips because I'm not able to pray if you're not going to open my lips to pray. 
So also faith, it's written on Abraham, Vayamen Bashem, that he believed in Hashem, and he was holding that faith as charity. Like Hashem gives him charity now to believe. It's, it's kindness of Hashem that is opening my eyes in that way that I can believe in Hashem. King David said to Hashem as well, You supported my destiny to believe in you. You cannot just believe in Hashem. Okay, you know what? I'm going to be a believer. No. Only if Hashem opens your mind in a way that you will have faith, then you will believe. But when Hashem wants to hide His face, to block your eyes, not to let you see, He's plastering their eyes from seeing. They cannot see anymore. That's it. They can't believe. They hate that concept. They don't want to hear about it anymore. It's not in your free choice if to believe or not to believe. To believe is a gift. So we can ask for faith. Please Hashem, let me believe in you. So that's the request. Now, I wanted to tell you and to teach you that like we said, every word, we spoke about it a little bit in our last session, in the second part. Every word is a vessel to contain bounty. Every word contains certain amount of wisdom and that wisdom is something that we can measure, we can recognize, we can understand and learn about from the letters that that word holds, contains, built of. So for an example, the word Bore, the Creator, the word Bore starts with the letter Bet and then the vowel of letter Vav is making the Bet to be Bo like B and O, Re, it's Resh, and then Aleph, Aleph is a silent letter here in this word, Bore, but still it's written, so it means something that it's silent, but it, and also it means something that it's there, you're not pronouncing it, you cannot hear it, but it's there in a way, so it means something, so now, Again, like we said, every letter you can dissect, you can investigate, you can break that word to parts. Not only Bore, also Bet, Vav, Resh, Aleph. Now what that means. Before we'll go to what that means and what are the options that can be opened from those dividings that we can understand that that word is not only one word with endless amounts of intentions also you can break it down to letters and then you have more options and more intentions and more possibilities to aim means that that word bore can hold so much bounty so much intention that even when you will break it down to letters you can break it and to plant new intention in every letter and letter. Now, also when you will break the letter bet to letters, you can see that in the next line, so also the letter bet is written in three letters. The first letter bet from the word bore is also a letter that you're writing somehow. How you write the letter bet Bet, Yud, Taf. Bet, Bet, Yud, Taf. Three letters that are teaching us how to pronounce the letter Bet. It's one letter that we're pronouncing in three letters. Bet, Yud, Taf makes the letter Bet. But also Bet, Yud, Taf you can break. And then you can break it, you can break the Bet to Bet and you can break the Yud to Yud and you can break the Taf to Taf. So now you can break those combinations to new combinations because the Bet is Bet and Yud and Taf and the Yud is Yud and Vav and Dalet and the Taf is Taf and Vav and there are many many ways to break it. Now, what's the use? What's the wisdom that it all contains? The wisdom that it contains based on the amount of knowledge 
that that person that is meditating, that is praying, that is thinking, or even just learning and observing on those letters, is holding in his mind. Now you need to understand for yourself, what are the understandings that you experience with those letters. For one person, he will think on many other words that starts with the letter Bet. For me, Bet represents Bracha. Blessing, wonderful. So Bet is a sign of Bracha. Also Bet is the first letter in the Torah. It's Bereshit. Okay, now I have few things. Bore starts with a Bet. The Creator starts with a Bet. What is Bet? For me, Bet represents the blessing and also Bereshit, the first, the beginning of creation. Okay, that's a nice start to express who the, the Bore, Creator, is for me. And on and on and on and you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. Bet is also Bait. The word Bait means a house. The temple is the Bet Hashem, the house of Hashem. And there are many, many, many aspects and many, many ways. You can also just meditate while observing and looking at the shape of the letters and to try to feel what they are doing to you emotionally, in your feeling, how that letter shines for me. What do I feel from that letter? And more and more and deeper and deeper. So, when people have time, not like us in those days, in regular, normal generations, when people had time, they could take their prayers, they could take verses, and to go to a quiet place and to spend some time of learning, some times of meditation, and going into the depths of those letters. And there are many, many books that have been written on those letters. For an example, there is a book that is related to Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva ben Yosef, that ancient giant one, that is called Midrash Otiyot de Rabbi Akiva. A whole book of explanations on the letters and their shapes and the intention of the letters. Rabbi Akiva composed and wrote that book based on his wisdom, ancient wisdom from time of the temple, and he himself wrote explanations on the letters. In the first class that I was giving about Kabbalah a couple of months ago, also one out of four I think it was, um, so in that class I explained a little bit on the shape of the letters, you can search, go and look and learn all of that if you want. So like I said, again, if you feel like practicing those kinds of meditations as well, and also like it's more intellectual meditation, it's not relaxation and, 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 and using less the power of imagination in that kind of meditation, it's more using the power of thought, power of the mind, power of the brain. So if that is your feeling, if this is something that you feel related to, so not only that prayer, Bore Olam, let me believe in you, also any other prayer is something that you can learn on, is something that you can put your mind to, even the name of Hashem. Print to yourself, sit in front of an open book, put the name of Hashem in front of you, like the, the verse is saying, Shiviti Hashem Lenigditamid, and think. It's allowed for you to sit and to think and to observe and to pray in your heart. Maybe you cannot repeat and say the name of Hashem again and again, over and over, if it's not part of your prayer, if it's not part of the verse that you're reading. Okay, but still to be with Hashem with the name itself and to think about it, what the letter Yud means for me, what the letter He means for me. Okay, how I'm going to break Yud? Yud is Yud Vav Dalet. He, it's He and Aleph. He can be also He and He. So maybe I will write it now with He and He. What such holy name? Yud is Yud Vav Dalet. And then you have He and He. And then Vav. Vav you can spell, you can break it to Vav, Aleph, Vav, and you can break it to Vav and Vav. 
It can be with a silent Aleph between the two Vav and it can be without it. What does it mean? What's the meaning of the word Vav? So again, like I said, it can be hard to an English speaker to meditate like that. But because we are trying to learn about Jewish meditation and about ancient ways of meditation, so we are exploring, we are learning, we are expanding our knowledge. A second thing that I wanted to teach you today, to open your eyes to it as well, is the Ten Sfirot. Ten Sfirot, I don't know which word... Um, um, Sapphires. Sapphires. I mean, whatever you want, you make up. It's a, it's, a, it's a very elastic language. You like, you do whatever, say whatever, and it, and it sounds like the, 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 the best seller. Like, what? No, Sirot, so they're calling it uh, what? Spheris. Spheris. What? Attributes? Okay, so you have ten of those. <laughs> you have ten of those. And the world is and the world is divided to ten. It's a it's a certain method of Kabbalistic understanding of the structure of the world of how the Creator brought down the loud, the light, the, cre the physical creation from the source of, of good before of getting into shapes and figures and, and, and dimensions, before of breaking into separated and divided parts and sections, so it came down in 10 levels, in 10 degrees, in 10 floors, in 10 sfirot, 10 sapphires, sapphires, whatever. So now, it's also, now the man, the person built also from those 10 floors, 10, le 10 levels. Also the Torah is divided to those ten. Every particle of the creation in that aspect of Kabbalah, way of understanding the structure of creation through those glasses of ten levels, ten sfirot, you can have a certain understanding and depth of your way of thinking and observing your life through those glasses of sfirot. In the days of Omer, when we're counting the Omer, after Lela Seder, in the next day after Lela Seder, we start counting the Omer. We're counting, counting 49 days until the holy day of Shavuot. In all of the Sidurim, in all the Sidur's books, it's written over there that every day is related to a certain Sfira, a certain level of that way of creation structure of creation and not only that every day is built out of one of those seven over there we're counting 49 out of seven divided to seven it's 49 so when we are reading and calling numbering the days of the Omer we're saying that that day is in the Sfira a certain sphira inside the second sphira, like one out of one. And the second day will be two out of one. And that's how we're achieving seven out of one, and then one out of two, and second out of the second, and on and on and on, until we're completing seven out of seven, and those are the seven first floors of physical world, that are equal to seven days of creation and the rest of them are spiritual and barely been discussed. So, even though that we have those ten and we're mainly focusing on the first seven, also we should know that when those ten are complete, like the DNA, that it's a chain, that it's one link connected to the next and then the third is coming. Also, the Sfirot built in that way that when you complete the whole floor of 10 levels, immediately you find yourself in the next level of another 10. And when you complete those 10, you rise to the next. And that's the way it's a circle, it's a spiral. It's rising and rising, completing the circle and rising to the next floor, next level, next level. Now, 
me, for an example, like I said on the letters that you can have intention based on your wisdom and on your knowledge, whatever, there are many deep intentions, many deep understandings on those levels, on those floors, on those sfirot. Wisdom is one of them, is the power of understanding. And like we said, except of holding that word wisdom as wisdom, chokhmah, you can divide the word to two. And then it can be also ma, power from what? Where do I receive my power from? And also, koach me Hashem. Hey, represent Hashem. So I can understand that the power that I'm receiving, I'm receiving it from Hashem, from the Creator. So when you feel that you're empty with no power, you can charge yourself to renew the source of power from Hashem. Okay? That's the wisdom. That's the meaning of real wisdom, that you know that you don't have no power except of the power that you receive from Hashem. Deep understandings. If you have the power to aim that intention, you can go with that. If you have different understandings or if you feel like breaking it in different ways, that will be your intention. Chokhmah. Bina is power of understanding, but the, in the way of but related to the heart, means more connected to the feminine side and more connected to your feelings and your emotions and less to the power of understanding that based on the wisdom and on the brain. Da'at. So the word Da'at is also knowledge, but also Da'at is a word that is, has a, a very deep and, and famous um, way of uh, dividing the word Da'at to three letters and it's a known concept to say that Da'at means knowledge means Da'at Mechatamid from those three letters we are taking those letters and putting them as first letter to three different words so those capital those capital first letters will be together creating the word Da'at, but when we're breaking them to those three words, they will say Da'at Smecha Tamid. You should know yourself always. If you want to have real knowledge, even about the world, even about another person, even about the Torah, first of all, you should know yourself. Know yourself doesn't mean to be selfish, it means to be aware to who you are. Before you know who you are and what you are and what your intentions are and what your powers are, you're not able to go and deal with something external. You don't have the ability, the capacity to bring in more information before you are a vessel, before you are something, before you know who you are. Before you are you, you're not a vessel. Even in English, you is the shape of a vessel. Think about it. It's, it's, it's light of Hashem that dressed itself into languages. You can find it in the Chinese letters, you can find it in the English, English letters, you can find it in the Arabic letters. You, you, you're going to find it. It's out there, with no doubt. Chesed, kindness, gvura, tiferet, netzach, It's all written. You can enjoy it. Also, we post it on Facebook, so people over there can enjoy it as well. And... Now, I want to share with you for an example that for me, all of those deep intentions for a certain while was too much. I wasn't able to think about those concepts when I was counting Omer. In the days of Omer, people see that it's written over there in the Sidurim, all those names of Sfirot, and everyone are so anxious, desire to, okay, I want to I wanna be a Mikubal, what, what's going on? I, I must learn Kabbalah, for sure. Well, well, it's the it's, uh, days of Omer. Must be Mikubal in the days of Omer. So, for me, it was too heavy. And I still wanted to work something with those like concepts, and I didn't have no power of understanding on those concepts at all. And today I'm even weaker than then. It's not like, you know, today you don't know. Today, like on the sofa while drinking lemon juice, I'm, 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 I'm counting Omer. Back then, I was, uh, at least I had the will, but with that will still, my mind was very weak and I was not learned and I didn't know anything. So, 
in, 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 in a certain help from heaven, some like miracle that happened with me, I heard once that our ancestors, Abram and Isaac and Jacob, they also related to those Sfirot. Abram is like Sfirat Chesed. He was a man of kindness. And Jacob, he was in Gvura, in power, in strength, in judgments. Those are aspects that were very strong with our ancestors. And Jacob, Yaakov, he was in Tiferet, in, in beauty, in glory. And he was going with that attribute, with that kind of, 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 of with that light. Okay? Now, there are other righteous people that are related to the next levels. For an example, Netzach, we know that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that me, for an example, I admire him, I love him, I learned a lot from his wisdom, he influenced it very, in a very positive way on my life, and he passed away in a certain day in Sukkot, that that day is related in Sukkot to a certain Sfira that is Netzach Sheba Netzach. And we know that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said on himself, Nitzachti ve'anatzeach. I won and I'm gonna win. So he had a certain connection to that Sfira of Netzach. Netzach is eternity and also it's talking about victory, on the ability of a person to win. So for me, the word Netzach immediately re re connects me with Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. That's for me, Hod. I heard that it's a Sfira that is related also to Aaron Cohen and also to um, and also to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So, and there are more. Yesod is to Yosef Atzadik, Malchut, kingship is to King David. So for me, for an example, just to show you how art artistic and free you can be to go with your mind, with your free will, with your soul, and still to stay inside Judaism, just to make it colorful. You can just bring yourself into what you do and then it will be much more joyful. So me, I wasn't able to think about chesed sheba chesed and then gvura sheba chesed. He didn't say anything to me, but Abraham was someone for me. And Isaac was someone for me. And Jacob was someone for me. And also Rabbi Nachman and Aaron and, and Rabbi Shimon. They were people. So for me, they reflected something. They gave some... It, mean, it meant something to me to think about those giants. Okay? So instead of thinking chesed sheba chesed, I was thinking about the combination of Abram with his attribute in the first day, and Abraham and Isaac in the second day, and Abraham and Jacob in the third day. And what's the connection between Abraham and Rabbi Nachman of Breslev? What was related between them? What is similar between them? And then in the fourth and fifth day, and that's how I would go, reminding myself of those righteous people that are related to those Sfirot in that day. I would say, Rabbi Nachman Ibrahim and Aaron Akoyen. Okay, what does it mean for me? Okay, today, what does it mean? Okay, Rabbi Nachman, I know who he is. Aaron, okay, what does it mean? And I would think about it. And it, and it aroused, it touched my, 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 my holy thoughts to connect myself to my avodah, to my effort, to those obligations that we have. If we're going to stuck ourselves just being obligated, and that's it, so it's dry and gray and I don't feel like it. And immediately you close the book and you do the minimum that you can because like too heavy. And I have other things to make sure and to take care of and like who, who needs it? Why you don't feel like you need it? Because you don't find the essence. Because you don't find the satisfaction. So when you try to learn on the highway, on the main way, under the guidings of the rabbis or whatever that are trying to teach you or from the books that are available or just been translated to English and you're stuck with those and you don't have others and you don't find the connection, you still must connect yourself somehow. So you need to connect yourself in the tools that you have with the power of your imagination, 
while using your holy thoughts, your holy desire, your good will, your hopes, your dreams. If for you bet is a house and not the combination of bet you tough, you need to think about a house. And it's perfect. And if for you the house is not the holy temple in the holy town on Mount Zion, it's your apartment in the 37th floor in that building, that's your house. In reality, that's your house. And you should make that house a dorm for the Shekinah, for the Spirit of Hashem to get into that place. So you're allowed to aim on your house. If for you the house is the family, if for you the house is the holidays, if for you the house is the mezuzah, it doesn't matter. You must bring the intention of your heart into the prayer, into the meditation. If you're not doing it, it's a dry and closed and sealed book. Like a piece of wood, that, a piece of stone that just stands in the corner and no one cares, no one has no emotions to it, no feelings about it. It's dry. It's not the will of Hashem. If Hashem would want to make us robots and droids, he, you know, Hashem he knows how to do it. He made us different people with deep emotions, with deep feelings, with deep understandings. And if we're not using those, so we're not using the spiritual gifts that He gave us to work with. Now, every person is made out of two main parts, body and soul. The body is physical and the soul is spiritual, is divine. Now, like that the body is made out of earth and the Creator created the first man while bringing, gathering sand and earth from all four corners of the universe, He took a drop, a tiny amount of earth from all over the world and made it all to be one piece, that that was Adam and Eve. From the earth of all the world, He created them. Now, when those two holy bodies been separated, broke down to pieces to all of us, every one of us received a different piece of earth as His body. Okay? So, in that aspect of your body, of your physicality, you are more connected to earth means physical and low in a certain aspect than all of your friends. You are the worst, the lowest in that aspect than any other person in the world. No one is so connected to earth in your point like you. But also Moses and also Abram and Isaac were like you as well. It's not that you are the worst. We're all the worst. But in our own unique ways, we are connected to physicality in a unique, disgusting way that we cannot bear and hold, but it's our reality. But, meanwhile, that we are focusing in the physical vessel of ours, in the same time, we're also attached in a unique, high connection to heaven in a unique aspect that no one else of your friends is connected. And also Abram and Isaac and Jacob and Sarah and Rachel and Leah and Rivka. They were not connected in that thread, in that line, in that rope, in that spiritual connection of yours. Your connection is the highest of everyone in that aspect. And it doesn't mean that you are better. Just that that is your connection, that is your link. And that link belongs only to you. And when we are meditating, when we are praying, when we are being who we are, we must connect ourselves to our reality, to build our humility based on our physicality. How, how do you say, artsy? Like, earthen? Earthly, earthly, how earthly we are. Lensman. What? Lensman. Lensman. Okay. You got it? I'm, I'm going to forget it. Len, len something? Lens what? Lensman. Lensman, Lensman. How Lensman you are, woman. How Lens woman you are. And? 
in the same time that this is your physical vessel that you need to heal, that you need to purify, that you need to wash, that you need to nurture, that you need to seed and plant into it, that it will grow, that it will bring the power of the land and not the destruction and, and, and heaviness of, of, of earth. Meanwhile, you are also well connected in your spiritual connection and this is the connection that you should express while praying, while davening, while learning, while meditating, okay? To believe in ourselves, it's to be connected to reality. Now, like we said that the word da'at, knowledge, the real meaning, the first knowledge that we need to have is to da'at mechata, mean know yourself first. So, Ashradam Shiodak Mikomo, the praised man, the praised person that he knows his place, is not only a person that knows his physical place, that knows how worse he is than others, how horrible he is, how low he is. It's also a person that is aware to his qualities, to his abilities, to his patience, to his love, to his power of understanding, to his sensitivity, to his horrible vocabulary. Every person needs to know exactly who he is, also in his physical aspect and also in his spiritual aspect. Now, while meditating, the main thing that we should do is to disconnect ourselves, not completely, but for a certain while, for a certain way, from our physicality and to focus our mind into our spiritual body. Most of the day we are too attached to our physicality. All of the time we feel, we touch, we taste, we smell, we hear, we see. All the time our physical senses are working. Time of meditation is time to reconnect yourself, means to put your main focus on the spiritual aspect of your being. So now if you're willing to do that, I'm going to try as well. Closing our eyes, like we said before, when your eyes are open, you are attached to the physical world. You can see things around you and those things are distracting your mind from your real spiritual reality of being a soul. You are a spiritual soul, a godly soul, a holy spirit that is trapped and installed inside of physicality, inside of a physical body. Sometimes it's a vehicle, sometimes it's prison. But when your mind is focused on that body, you can feel the heaviness of it. But when you are sending your mind to focus in your spirit, in your wind, in your divine connection to the Creator, you can start climbing that Jacob ladder. You can start climbing to higher aspects, to higher worlds, to higher and deep understandings, and to connect yourself to your true self. When you will be connected to your true self, and you will be who you are, in that moment, you will have a real understanding about the Bible and the Torah, the written Torah and the oral Torah. And also you'll have understanding about the levels of the righteous ones. And after achieving that second level, you will have an access to understand things about Hashem, about the Master of the Universe, the Creator Himself. First of all, you should know yourself. When you are disconnected from yourself, you are disconnected from the Bible and you are disconnected from the righteous ones that are transferring the light of Hashem into verses, into light that is understandable, that is edible, that is digestible to people like us. Before you connect yourself to who you really are, to your reality, to the truth of who you are, you cannot understand the real intention of the verses. You're going to twist the verses. You're going to misinterpret and misunderstand the real intention of the verses and also of the real righteous people that are talking to us and explaining to us what is the real way of Hashem. So first of all, we need to connect ourselves to the true self of us. 
not to be too hard on ourselves, not to be too judgmental, not to be critical, not to criticize and to break our own spirits, to connect ourselves to reality, to connect ourselves to the truth, it's to connect ourselves to the true aspect of who we are. You can find yourself tired, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are lazy. You can also find about yourself that you are lazy, but it doesn't mean that you are evil. You can find yourself that you are acting in an evil way, but it doesn't mean that you as a soul is an evil and negative soul. You have an evil inclination. When you are connecting yourself to reality, then you are staying positive all the time and you can grow. And the nature of spirituality, the nature of spirit is that it is always rising, it's always growing like the world to come. That in the world to come, we will grow and expand and fly higher and will know more and will be more satisfied in every moment and moment of our eternal existence we will just develop and will be uplifted on and on and on with no end it is an eternal world no end no limits to our growth in that world our souls are coming from that place so when you are connected to your soul, you are growing. If you feel that you're not growing, if you feel that you're not getting clever and clever, if you don't feel that you are rising and developing, it's time to connect yourself to spirituality. To connect yourself to spirituality, it's to connect yourself to that inner aspect of your life. The physicality is surrounding you from outside. Spirituality is an inner source of energy that is coming from within. When our eyes are open, even the most beautiful view, an open view like the sea and the sunrise in front of our eyes, will distract our thoughts from our inside, from our soul we will still be trapped in that illusion of physical beauty. Oh, fantastic sky, wonderful clouds, amazing beautiful sea, they are all physical. The sea made out of water contains salt, fish are swimming, and there is much waste in that sea as well. The air is polluted, the air are particles of physical details that are, are, are flying in the air. It's atoms, it's something physical. It looks blue, but only because of a certain reflection of the light. Also the light and also the sun are blocking you to understand that the Creator, He is the source of light and not the sun. The sun is not the real source of light. The Creator is using the sun to shine His light to the world. But it's the light of Hashem that is shining and not the light of the sun. There is no existence to the sun except of in the illusion world of physicality. So when your eyes are open, you are a prisoner in the physical world, no matter which direction you will look at, even if that direction will be an open Bible, an open holy book that is talking about secrets of Kabbalah. Still you're trapped in physicality. Only when you're closing your eyes, you are getting into your individual zone, to your inner connection to infinity. Inside there are no details, and there is only the voice of Hashem, the spirit of Hashem that is hovering above the water, the water of your soul. That your soul is called crying water, water that fills the lacking of godliness, water that are desiring and yearning to go back to their source after being separated so long ago, water that fills the betrayal of the Creator in His children of dividing their souls from Him, and they feel betrayed, they feel rejected, they feel humiliated, and they want justice and they want the truth to come back to the light. 
and they want the Creator to show His face again, and they want to understand what in the world is going on here. And this is your inner will and your inner desire for justice, and for love, and for good, and for kindness, and for honor, for respect, for friendship, and all good attributes, all good manners. This is your natural character. This is your real nature. This is the essence of who you are in your spiritual aspect, in the spiritual aspect of your creation. To be a good person, it's to be a person that works out of the power of his soul and not out of the power of his physical body. Not to be a person that people think that he is a good person, just to be good. Not to try to be good in the eyes of other people, just really to be good. Never to hurt no one, to care about others, to express your honesty and to be who you are in your kind way, in your funny way, in your quiet way, in your musical way, in your honest way, in your sensitive way, in your wise way, in the way that your soul is flowing because every person is connected to the Creator through a different lifeline. And this is the line of your life. And you must connect yourself to the source of life and to bring down buckets on buckets, gallons of light from that endless source and to wash the world with the light of your soul. You cannot wash the world with the light of a soul of another person. That light is not accessible to you. You have only your own. And even if in a way you want to say, for an example, I will share the video of Dror Kasuto with my friend. Now the light of Dror's soul will shine to my friend. I'm telling you, you are wrong. Because in the moment that my video went through your email, through your share button, through your WhatsApp, it been transformed to be your distribution. It is the light that you are distributing to the world. Your friend is receiving it through your link, through your act. It was your act. The fact that you felt related to a certain wisdom that being expressed by me doesn't necessarily mean that it's my wisdom. Because if you felt related to that wisdom, it means that you are carrying the same wisdom inside of yourself. I just helped you in a way to uncover your feeling or to express your thoughts or to think in a deeper aspect, I gave you a push to find yourself and you went and agreed with the light of your soul, with your inner voice and went and made an act with it, you yourself responsible to that act and also going to be rewarded on that act. And my story is a different story and you need to take care of your own. You need to be who you are and you need to believe in yourself. And it's so good to close your eyes once in a while and to disconnect yourself from all the shades and all the colors, from all the figures, all the sizes, all the smells and all the dividings and limitations of physicality. It's so good to get into that quiet zone. And sometimes in that quiet zone you can be quiet and sometimes in that quiet zone you can talk calmly and quietly. And sometimes you can sing. And sometimes you can just have your melodies running in your mind. And you can compose your own songs. And sometimes you can rhyme. And sometimes you can write. And sometimes you can just think. And 
to reconnect yourself to your soul with no middlemen, with no people that are standing between you to heaven. Just you and heaven. Open your arms. Open your heart. Aim your heart to the Creator and ask for your needs. Express your gratitude. Express your anger, your frustration from darkness. It's not important who you will be in that time of honesty. The main thing that is needed is that you will go all the way with your honesty and be who you are. A good friend, if he disappoints you, he will hear from you all of your feelings and all of your frustration because he's a good friend. A good friend is a person that you can open your heart to. And if he's a good friend, he will take your rebuke and he will fix and work on himself corresponding to your words because he is respecting you because he cares about your feelings and your thoughts and if he ignored your feelings he wants to fix himself that's a good friend now if you think that Hashem is a good friend of yours so you should understand that he is willing to hear your heart even if your heart is the most broken heart in the world even if you are now finishing 2,000 years of horrible, painful exile in the sea of bitterness and in the swamps of despair and you barely dragged yourself to this meditation or to this hit bodhidut, to this individual prayer, if you made it to this moment and now you're going to lose that moment of sincerity and honesty because you will try to pretend to be more righteous than who you are or holier than who you really are or in a higher level than the level that you hold you will lose your connection to the Creator because the Creator is close to everyone that will call Him with truth and if today your truth is that you feel like burning it all and start all over again, so that's your feeling. And you know what? Hashem did it also once. 2,000 years ago, He decided to burn His own house and to restart and to start all over again. Yes, sometimes that's how you feel. Sometimes that's what you do. It doesn't mean that it's good. It doesn't mean that it's permitted or allowed. Even Hashem Himself, the Creator of the world, expressed His regret on burning our temple and killing all those souls. Those are days of tshuva. Those are moments of tshuva. We need to come back to the Creator with an honest heart, with a sincere heart, and to tell Him, Hashem, sometimes it's too heavy. Sometimes I feel it's too much. Sometimes I cannot interpret and understand your intention anymore. Sometimes I don't know what to do. You're allowed to say your thoughts. If you don't feel that you have the Creator to speak with, it's time to try that way of being honest with Him. And like the Rabbi Nachman of Wesler said, that when they're helping you in your Hit Bodhidut, so you are speaking to the Creator like you speak to your best friend. And it's exactly what I told you before. That your best friend will hear the worst words coming out of your mouth. And not because that you disrespect him. Just because that you know that with him you can share your deepest thoughts and emotions. And while counting on him while counting on Him that He will be there to listen to you, He will recognize the truth of your intention, the honest voice that is coming out of your heart, through your mouth, and He will be close to you to answer to your prayers, to your requests, and to your dreams, that they will all come true. Thank you very much for joining us. To the Muna Project Meditation.
kosher. I hope it was Jewish meditation sessions. I'm blessing you that all your prayers will come true, will be answered, that you will find the confidence to be who you are in public, not to be afraid to express the light of your souls that been treasured inside of you by the Almighty Himself. You cannot be embarrassed in who you are because then you are being embarrassed in the Creator Himself. You disrespect Hashem when you disrespect yourself because you are an art handmade by the creation, Creator. You are His creation. He is named the creator of the world because He created you and us and the rest of the universe. So if He is proud enough to present this creation and to be named and called after it, you should be proud to be part of it. So express that part that it's you, that share that Hashem shared with you and just let it grow, let it bloom let it shine, let it be expressed and expand. Don't be scared to be who you are. You are beautiful and you have a hard time recognizing it. I understand. I'm stuck with the same problem myself. Hold hands together and we're going to make it. And like I'm saying, we're in it to win it. May Hashem bless us all. Thank you very much. Chazak we hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.